Hello and welcome to my channel. While most of you may know me for my Destiny content, today we have a bit of a different one, and that will be looking at how to make the most out of your stream deck. This does mark a departure from my usual content, and the plan moving forward is to continue delivering the Destiny content you know me for, as well as reviews and playthroughs of other games, opinion pieces, and the occasional tech video like the one I have planned for you today. Now on the topic of today's video, I've seen tons of tutorials and videos over the years of people showing off their sensor panels, which are quite often made in ADA64. And while these look pretty cool, I find them to be pretty impractical in that you have to buy a complete separate LCD screen that can only really be used for the panel itself, um, as well as they require far more setup. Today I will show you that with the use of hardware info 64 and the use of a very simple plugin, we can get all that same information, but while using a much more versatile product. So with all of this out of the way, let's start by taking a look at how this looks in action. To demonstrate this, I've set up my camera to record my stream deck in real time, and I've also got 3D Mark open. Um, so we're gonna run a stress test just to see how the stream deck responds and displaying the data that hardware info is sending to it. So we're just gonna run port rail here. It's a good kind of overall indicator mostly focusing on the GPU. So we'll get that started. Uh, now in terms of what you can put on the Stream Deck, you can put on essentially anything that hardware monitor has a sensor for. Um, for me, I'm using a coolant temp that's given, me by, given to me by my um, Octo, by Aqua computer, as well as ambient temperature, um, RAM usage, fan RPM and pump RPM, the classic CPU temperature as well as usages, um, GPU temperature as well as core clock, usages, um, power consumption, RAM usage, uh, and memory junction temperature. So once this gets started, you'll see uh, for the core clocks are starting to increase. But now that it started here, they're kind of pinned. You can see everything reacting in real time. Um, and you can set the limits of the graphs, how much each button fills up uh, within the software. So I'll show you guys how to do that here shortly. Uh, so with that, I think we're, I can end the benchmark. This was just to give you guys an idea on how it looks. There is a bit of blur on the buttons. It's just limited by the lighting in my room. Trying to capture the stream deck isn't the easiest thing. Um, but let's get into how to actually set this up. So to start, you're gonna wanna head over to hardwareinfo.com and navigate to the licensing section. Um, now you can download the free version uh, using the download tab here. The caveat to that is, so we need to use this shared memory support feature. Um, and there is a 12 hour time limit within the free version. Um, now this can be re-enabled re every 12 hours, but if you don't wanna deal with that, you can either pay for the pro version, which is about $30 a year. Uh, and this, this is only needed if you uh, have a newer GPU that you wanna monitor, uh, being the RTX 4000 series or AMD 7000 series GPUs. Alternatively, if you have an older GPU um, or don't care about monitoring your GPU, you can download anything previous to 7.0. Uh, Hardware Info 7.0 is when they implemented the, the paywall for, to the shared memory support. Um, so 6.42 is fine to download if you have um, an older GPU and, and you won't be um, subjected to that 12 hour time limit. So now after you download Hardware Info, you can go to Add-ons tab and uh, download the Stream Deck plugin. Alternatively, you can get it right from the Stream Deck app itself by just searching Hardware Info. Um, and I already have it installed. So once you have Hardware Info installed, the wrong thing uh, right here. So these are the sensor panels. So I can't get the, the window to pop up since I already have it all set up. Um, but there'll be a, 
a tab and you want to have it to start with sensors, you check that box. You'll also want to go into settings right here and we're going to want it to show sensors on startup, minimize sensors on startup, minimize instead of closing, um, auto starts so that this starts when Windows starts. Um, and what's very important here is the share memory support has to be checked. So like I said, if you're on the free version of the most up-to-date software, every 12 hours you're going to have to come in and manually check this. Um, so that might tip some people into purchasing the pro version or using the older version if you're on older hardware. So with that all set up, you can look through the sensors to see where things are located because um, this will mirror what, it, what is shown in the Stream Deck app. Um, but let's get into the, the app itself here or the, the plugin. So you can see this is my setup. So I just have a monitoring folder on my Stream Deck. Uh, and then I have everything that I care about being monitored like I discussed before. But we're not going to mess around with that. We're just going to make a new folder to demonstrate this. Um, so at the bottom of our kind of action bar at the side here, you'll notice the new hardware info um, action. So we can drag that on. And we'll start by just doing CPU. So from here, we can title it. And then we go to pick our sensor. So 5950X is where I know the usage is. If we go all the way down here, um, total CPU usage right here. We can also set min and max values for what the, the bottom of the, um, the button is versus the top for the graph purposes. So min at zero, max 100, that makes sense for percentages. And we can also change the color. So maybe we want this to be blue, for example. Uh, and then the highlight can be that color. So let's add another one. This time we'll do temperature. So CPU temperature again. Um, this one I know is under enhanced. And we have CPU die average here. And you can change, so maybe, I mean, Ryzen probably isn't getting that cold. So maybe go 40 to 95. It's not gonna get that hot on water, but. Uh, and then for foreground and highlight, maybe let's have this one be red. With the, the highlight accent. Okay, so now let's do a GPU. So we'll mirror this GPU usage again. Uh, where is that going to be? 4090. Um, and I believe the one we're looking for is called, there we go, D3D usage. And we can set again 0 to 100. That makes sense for this. I will make this blue again. And then let's do one last one for GPU. And for this one, we want maybe temperature again. GPU temperature, here we go. So my GPU gets quite cold, so 22 is probably fine. Maybe I make this 70. And then for foreground, let's go red again of red or red. So you can see here how easy this is to get set up. Let's do one more GPU. Uh, what do we want to call this? Wattage or power. Let's call it power. So let's go 4090 again. Choose sensor. pin is right at the top and then for this 10 to this is a 600 watt card so go like that and 
then maybe for this, we want it to be yellow. It's kind of a powdery color. You can see how easy this is gonna set up. It's very um, simple, easy to, easy to look at, easy to use, and it's on a device that many of us just have for either uh, content creation, but it's also just a great device to have in your setup for things like this. Um, we also have other plugins, like changing the color of my hue lights, or just turning them off. So it's quite useful, even if you don't use it for streaming, um, just good for macros and controlling different devices. So if you found this uh, video helpful, or if you liked it, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Um, the next one will be a kind of comparative review and analysis of Callisto Protocol, uh, the Dead Space remake, as well as the Resident Evil 4 remake, uh, coming from the perspective as someone who never uh, played those games um, when they came out and was never really interested in the survival horror uh, genre as a whole. So with that, we will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.